Hey, you. Yeah, that's right. I'm talking to you. Are you looking for the best way to promote your podcast? It's easy. Just advertise your podcast to your ideal target audience. That's right. Listeners of similar podcasts. Podbean has the best and most cost-effective options for you. Just go to the website, sponsorship.podbean.com slash str. That's right. Your friends here at Scout Team Radio are hooking you up. Go to sponsorship.podbean.com slash str, and you will get the best deals to get your podcast rolling. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy Scout Team Radio. Yeah. You want to like them, but you can't. Are you listening? What? Are you listening? Did you bring me on this show to insult me? Yeah. Uh. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh. Yeah. Hey, y'all don't want it with us, uh. man. You say gangsters over here, Drake man. Drake gangsters. Uh. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Uh. yeah. Good morning and welcome back. You are listening to Scout Team Radio. We bring it to you hot and live each and every morning, Monday through Friday, right here on 12 Ounce Sports Radio. I am your favorite host. They call me Loudbeard. You are the most egotistical, self-deluded person I have ever met. And all of that is true. And the man on that other microphone, he is not your favorite host because that would be me. You know him as America, America. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it is your boy Chris America coming to you live this Tuesday, August 27th, Loudbeard. It is one year from this day that you and I decided to do a crazy morning show Every single Monday through Friday here on 12 Ounce Sports Radio. Loudbeard, it has been an awesome year. Yeah, it has. Um, you know, I was looking at that yesterday because I save every episode and I have a file. And I got to the point where I save them by date, where now there's going to be two 827s. I'm going to make sure I have to pick the right year when I put it back on the podcast. And maybe I shouldn't put back the one from a year ago. Or maybe I should just for... Uh, Old times sake. I don't know, but one year. It is unbelievable that we've been doing this for one year, and it has been a great year. We have learned a lot. I think we've gotten a lot better at what we do, and we just we come out and have fun, right? It's not about doing anything serious. It's not about being the greatest ever. It's just about coming on the microphones and having a good time, and I've had a great time with you, Chris America, over the last year. Yeah, I've had a great time as well. Um, no regrets. There's not been a single time where I thought, Man, I'm kind of over this whole everyday thing. There's been maybe a couple of times where we've both been talking to each other and say, why don't, why don't we take a day off here too? Or why don't we just take this week off for winter break or something? And that's really about the extent of it. And usually that week that we took off or if I take off for a few days, I'm like, man, I miss it. I'm ready to get back on the mic and I'm rejuvenated within a few days. Oh, yeah. It's a good feeling being on the microphone. It's nice to be able to to get together each and every morning and talk about what's going on in the world of sports and, you know, just uh, all that. So here I got a tweet coming in, and Mike Berlant, thank you for, for tuning in so early this morning, but he says, Scout Team Radio, I remember being so jealous when you guys announced going to a daily show. Congrats on that past year, fellas. Yeah, this was a, it's a commitment, right? Like we, we say, okay, we're going to go daily. We were doing a once-a-week show Wednesday evenings, and, you know, we were getting some pretty good listings off of it. But we're like, let's let's take it to the next level. Let's take it to the next step. And we decided to make that commitment, to take that leap. And it's been great, man. It's been absolutely fantastic. And Mike Berlin, we appreciate your support. Uh, you listen pretty much every day. And uh, we really, really appreciate that. You know, what's funny is um, when people ask, well, what time do you do the show at? And I tell them 6 in the morning. They're like, man, that's, that means you got to get up so early. And I'm like, it's not really that much earlier for me. I really only get up like maybe 45 minutes earlier, maybe an hour earlier than what I would if I, you know, didn't do this radio show. And it's totally worth the lost hour of sleep. Oh, yeah, I completely agree with that. And sleep, yeah, we'll have time to sleep later on in life, right? When we'll, we're we'll old sleep men, later when we're dead. 
Yeah, yeah. Or retired. Either way, yeah. we'll get we'll catch up on her sleep. Uh, one way or another. So we right. don't miss it now. Or if this thing ever takes off full time, then we'll either sleep after the morning show or before our afternoon show. One of the two. But yeah, we'll get sleep we at some point. Yeah, we're hoping one of these days. Uh, you know, we'll we'll get millions of listeners and we'll take like a, a, a douchebag like Doug Gottlieb and, and knock his show off the air. And, and yeah. they, maybe they'll throw on this one. I think people would and enjoy I mean, that. He's out in California. He comes on at noon. That'd be a ter- perfect time slot for us. A, a oh, West yeah. Coast we noon time perfect. slot. Yeah. Um, who is that you know guy who anyway? I You know who I don't envy, though, Loudbeard, are the morning local news people. They got to be working at like 3 o'clock in the morning, which ugh, I couldn't do that. Waking up at 2.30, getting to work by 3.30, no thanks. Yeah, your whole life changes, right? You like you have to go to bed each night by like six p.m., seven p.m. just to be able to get up at two thirty. I mean, that's crazy. Like you lose yeah. half of your your day uh, by doing that, and it's all about dedication to to your craft, right? And that's what we're doing, right? Like people are like, oh, you're crazy for getting up so early. Well, we're doing this on our own. We're not making millions of dollars. I can transparently say that to our listeners pretty easily. I mean, we're not even making tens of dollars. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and we got a tweet coming in from Memphis Spence. Congrats on the anniversary show. Thank you, Memphis Spence, another one of our great listeners and good friend of the show. Uh, thank you so much. We appreciate your support each and every and you, morning, man. You you're, know what? you're awesome. It's support from those guys who get up early with us. Like They're up as early as we are, and that's why we're providing this entertainment because we're not the only ones that have to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning, 5.30 in the morning to, to do a show or to go to work. There's tons of us that have to get up that early, sometimes earlier. I know a lot of times um, the old re-up sports guys, I think they would tweet at us from work or either on the, either from work or on their way home from work. I can't remember what it is. I know Mike Berlon and Scotty Kaiser, they're sometimes listening to us after they get off of work. So, you know, they've been up all night. Yeah, it's crazy. Absolutely crazy. And that this is, this is why we like this time slot. One, we have everyday jobs. We do. Uh, so we got to be able to slide it in before that. But... This is the time when people are either getting ready. You work in that night shift, you're getting home from work. If you're working the day shift, you're just getting up, getting prepared for work. And guess what? We're here to greet you each and every morning. Yeah, so speaking of, of being up all, every night, all night, um, this is a story I wanted to talk to you at the end of last week, but I kept forgetting to bring it up. I need to start jotting down notes during the day when I hear a good story. But Larry Bird was kept up all night about this mural that an artist painist, paint, painist, painted somewhere in Indiana, I believe it was, and she took a, a photograph from a Sports Illustrated cover when he was with Indiana in the 70s, and then she gave him a whole bunch of tattoos. And this kept Larry Bird up at late at night. He couldn't sleep. All he could think about was this painting of him with tattoos on him, and so he had his lawyer teams get together and ask that the artist... Not remove the painting, but remove the tattoos because it hurts his brand. Is this uh, Team Petty from Larry Bird? Or do you think Larry Bird is just by saying that a a mural that absolutely nobody except for people in Indiana would have known about until he brought it up and made it a national headline story, do you think a mural with him having tattoos would ruin the brand of Larry Bird? No, this is definitely Team Petty. I mean, Larry Bird is who he is, right? At this point... His brand is solidified. We know who Larry Bird is. He, he was an amazing basketball player through the 80s and early 90s, and we know who he is. He, he also was, you know, a coach and then a, a GM and, and an owner and, and president and all kinds of stuff in basketball. Like, we know who he is. He's Larry Bird. Oh, a tattoo. That doesn't affect your brand, dude. Like, come on. That's Team Petty. But that is the epitome of crotchety old man coming out of middle America saying, I don't want anybody thinking I have tattoos. Those are for the hippies. They are for the hippies and those young millennials. Yeah. I don't want to be confused with a millennial. That no, is not I don't want to do I that. Is that my best Larry Bird impression or what? That is that your best Larry good. Bird impression. Yeah. It was spot on. I honestly thought we had it. Larry Bird on the radio. <laughs> uh, pretty much. I mean, it just make so, any old old man voice. And then that's Larry The funny Bird part of, about this story, Loudbeard, is I heard about it. The first time I heard about it was on real radio. Not even a sports radio show was talking about this. And I, I get to thinking, 
Like, I get you're, you still have a brand in Indiana, and you want to protect it there. But at the same time, if you don't say anything about this painting, the whole nation doesn't know about it. And so, in a lot of ways, Larry Bird brought attention to something that he didn't want attention brought to. And he ruined his own brand. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's I guess, the biggest part of the story is, why is this a story? Who made this a story? You did, Larry Bird. You went out of your way to make a big story out of something stupid. And, yeah, I think the intent when it happened, you were probably sitting there thinking, oh, I want to go ahead and get this down before anybody notices. Let's hurry up and make, make the artist do it. But you don't realize when you do stupid, crotchety old man stuff like that, it gets national attention. Yeah, you didn't think it would, but guess what? It did, and now you cannot let that back. You yeah. can't put that back in the box, right? Like, you open the yeah, box. Yeah, that cat's out of the bag. It, the can of worms popped out. You can't yep. put them back in. You're not going to do it. So, Larry Bird, you look like a total crotchety old man DB this morning, and we, we're okay with that because that's the what your brand is. That is your brand now. Is, the toothpaste is out of the tube. There you go. I love toothpaste. Yeah, so yeah, so Larry Bird has a tattoo. No, he doesn't have a tattoo. That's why he's complaining. Is because so you're reading that on Twitter. Uh, yeah, we have it, uh-huh. 12 Ounce Sports, at 12 Ounce Sports, hitting us up on Twitter. He says, Larry Bird has a tattoo? Question mark. Well, there is a picture of tattoo from Fantasy Island on this tweet, so that makes this tweet yes. absolutely memorable. But Larry Bird doesn't have a tattoo. He got painted with one, and yeah. he thinks that that is bad for his brand. You know what's bad for your brand? Thinking and speaking, Larry Bird, Being because that's not old working man for you right now. For your for your brand, he did say that the Indiana tattoo that was on the forearm of the painting can stay. Just all the other tattoos have to be removed. Okay, and, now it just it just got really dumb. That just made yeah. it even worse. Yep. Yeah, so the the artist is obliging, and I think she's she's loving it. I think because now she, her name and her brand is out there. People know who she is all across the nation, and I'm sure she's getting interviews galore, and I, I would live it up if I was her. Oh, yeah. This is great publicity for her. Maybe she threw a little extra money to Larry Bird and said, hey, let's make this a big deal. I want to go viral. Here we go. Come on. Help me out, brother. And maybe he's Thanks just a doing, doing a solid. He's giving the artist a solid. It, it, you know, I got to look at this at all angles. That's what we are. We're media people. We got to look at things at all angles. We can't be biased. We can't be one-sided. We can't just assume Larry Bird's just a crotchety old man, even though he probably is. We have to look at this as... Maybe he was just doing this this starving artist a solid because she did such a great job painting him. No? Yep. No, no. I agree. No, you're not I feeling agree. it. I can I'm tell you're not it. feeling it. No, you're not. I can tell you're not feeling it. And that's it. I'm moving on from Larry Bird. I'm going to go to James Franklin. Now, this is a, a, a sports story about another guy who just doesn't look that good in the media nowadays. James Franklin, coach of Penn State, article comes out that there is a lawsuit that is being thrown out towards Penn State, towards James Franklin, towards Sandy Barber, who is the athletic director of Penn State. And what happened was is this this doctor is is claiming that he was um, treating some of these young players that had ailments, and he wouldn't clear them as quickly as the program wanted him to. He wouldn't put them back on the field until he felt that they should be back on the field until they're ready. And so because of this, he got ousted out of his position because he wasn't rushing these players back just as quickly as the program wanted him to, and James Franklin was a big part of that. So I want to get your thoughts on this, Chris America. I mean, is college football still just a dirty old sport that we can't get cleaned up? Well, one, I think all of Penn State and their fans gave a huge sigh of relief when the lawsuit didn't include something else that they're known for. So there's that. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Good point. God, you know, it's hard to believe that this mentality still exists today. I get the competitive edge, but at what point do you start devaluing human life and start valuing your life, your money, and your desire to win over, over human life? And if you're not a medical doctor... Shut the hell up and get out of the way. Let the doctors do the doctoring and you do the coaching. That's it. Yeah, I'm going to um I'm going to say that this does exist still. It, it exists and it exists it's probably rampant and and we don't want to talk about it, but when I I think of coaching, especially on the college football level, 
There's all kinds of D2 coaches out there that are really great coaches. There's a lot of D3 coaches that are really great coaches. There's a lot of D1 coaches, really great coaches. But if you want to be at that level, that pinnacle, that Nick Saban, Urban Meyer, that, that, that top echelon, if you're seeking to get there, sometimes you just got to ruffle a few feathers, and sometimes you got to go in the gray area. It is so competitive it is such a big deal. It is so much money involved. There is so much pressure. There are so many boosters that are pushing for these teams to be so good that all that pressure creates these types of situations where the coach is like, you know what? I don't care if his ankle's broken. Tape that up. Tape it up. Let's put him back in. I need him on the field. And that's what we have gotten into. And it is when you have a, a, a system that creates that much pressure – no matter where you are at in life, if you're a salesman trying to sell cars, if there is so much pressure on you to sell cars, you're going to do it any sneakily way that you possibly want to. And I think that's the same thing that happens with coaching and college football. Yeah, I sit there and I think about the story from a year ago uh, with Marilyn and why I personally did not want DJ Durkin to be allowed off the hook. Why, when DJ Durkin said, woe is me, I had nothing to do with it, blah, blah, blah. This is why DJ Durkin needed to be made an example of. And clearly, it still hasn't worked because there were a lot of media members and a lot of people in the coaching ranks, like I believe um, Will Muschamp was one of them that came forward and said, oh, poor DJ Durkin, he didn't deserve to be fired, blah, blah, blah. No, this is why DJ Durkin needed to be made an example of. Because last year, we had a player die at the University of Maryland and that's in the same conference as Penn State. So it's not like Penn State and Franklin didn't know about that Maryland story. There's absolutely no way that they could excuse it and say, oh, we just, you know, I was busy coaching last year. I didn't know about that Maryland story. No, like they're in your conference. These were questions that you got asked at your press conference at Big Ten Media Days last summer. And I'm sure you got a couple of them this summer, maybe not because the media moves on. But there's no way James Franklin can say, I didn't know about this story. And yet. He's learned nothing. He's learned nothing about anything from that death uh, that happened a year ago. And that's, that's the shame part, Loudbeard, is last year we had an example of people ignoring medical advice or you had trainers and medical you know, doctors and stuff afraid to give medical advice because of the coaching staff. And now you have another coach who's in the same exact conference. I believe they're in the same division. Not that that really matters either way, but the same conference – being accused of doing the same thing. And luckily, nobody's died at Penn State yet because of it. Oh, I completely agree. Is You know, it, it's it's all fun and games when it's like, okay, you know, you have a broken finger. Go ahead and push through it. No big deal. But when we get to the point where we're talking about uh, concussions, we're talking about head injuries, we're talking about impossible heart issues and issues that could lead to death, I mean, you have to take medical advice. And I'm, I'm worried that we have created a culture that says winning is more important, winning is everything. And when we say winning is everything, it means absolutely everything. And what happens is these young men who are way too young get put into these situations and it either has lifelong effects or it absolutely could lead to death. And that we saw that in Maryland last year. And Penn State's lucky that it hasn't happened to them. And they're not the only program. They're just the program being named in this lawsuit. I'm sure it is happening all over the place. I, I am 100% positive that this is happening at, at schools all over the country. Oh, yeah, for sure. Schools and NFL and pro teams, too. No, I, and this is a great segue. Um, so LaRon McLean, who is was a fullback in the NFL for seven seasons, he was a pretty good fullback. Uh, he, he comes out with some pretty severe tweets on Twitter, and he, he kind of calls out the NFL, and he calls out about how he's got head injuries and, and he's got a lot of um, mental illness and challenges because of that. So I'm going to read a couple of these tweets for you uh, real quick, and this is just, I think, kind of a continuation of that is you live that gladiator mentality through college, through pro football, and you don't realize what the long-lasting damages are. This is why... Right now, the NFL is saying to Antonio Brown, you can't change your helmet. Like We are doing everything we can to help prevent these injuries because we've realized that we have messed up guys' lives because we haven't cared enough about safety. We have to care more about safety. Um, Leron, Leron McLean says, 
I have to get my head checked. Playing fullback since high school, it takes too effing much to do anything. My brain is effing tired. NFL, I need some help with this shite. Dark times, and it's showing. Effing help me, please. They don't care. I had to get lawyers, man. And that's the sad part because here is um, one more tweet for you that shows. Let's see. He says, watch how fast they come to the aid if I was some quarterback or anything but. No, I was a fullback. That did it all. NFL, I need help, and I need the process to speed the blank up. I'm about to crash out, and it's paperwork. I don't want to hear it. Come on, man. I'm going to paraphrase that so I don't use the bad words. I'm done. I'm out. So this is a situation where a former player is asking for help from the NFL. He's saying that if he was a quarterback or somebody sexy, like a big name, they would be all over it because they don't want that negative publicity. But because he was a fullback, he is not a big name, and they're just sitting there saying, okay, you got to fill out more paperwork. you got to fill out more paperwork. I believe that. I believe it. I think there needs to be a better program where these guys get, like, real help. Not just, hey, sign some paperwork. We'll get somebody to call you back in six weeks, like he's insinuating here on these texts or on these tweets. The NFL and college football, I mean, like, we got to stop this barbaric mindset, and we got to fix this, man. These guys got to get better help, and we got to stop ignoring it. You know, Lambert, it's not even, it's not even college and NFL. It's it's at the high school and the peewee levels, too. I remember when I was in high school, I wrestled, I ran in cross country. This phrase was said to me over and over and over again. Pain is temporary. Pride is forever. And that's at the high school level. Um, I think that's the worst phrase ever mentioned in mankind. Maybe not, but it's up there. Because I sit there and I think about, you know, the man with the golden mic. And I know a lot of us know somebody with this story of, like, Hey, uh, you want to go for a run? Uh, I, I can't go for a run. I, I've had bad knees since high school. Well, what, what did you do? Oh, I played on the football team, and I tore my ACL, and I've had bad knees ever since. Okay, so pain isn't temporary. Pain is forever. And that pride that we talked about, nobody cares about your high school football days ever. Nobody even cares about your NFL football days. Like, if you were at a bar and some dude told you, yeah, I was uh, the left tackle on the 1984 Super Bowl team, You'd be like, wow, that's really cool. But then he would just turn into just another guy eventually. Like, it wouldn't be something that you would just be so blown away that you want to buy this man, like, all the beers you want, get his autograph. And, and you, you might make a passing story out of it. But the reality is, is nobody gives a damn about the left tackle of the Super Bowl championship team in 1984. Yeah, yeah. especially if it's the backup left tackle. You know, like, who are yeah. you? Who were you? It doesn't matter who it is. Like, Eventually, your star fades. Like Even Michael Jordan, as big as his star is, if you go up to an 18-year-old kid today, he's going to tell you LeBron James is better and that he doesn't give an S what you think about Michael Jordan. Like He just is not affected by my, what Michael Jordan did 20, 30 years ago. And it was the same when we were growing up with Michael Jordan. And you hear about guys like Oscar Robinson. Yes, Oscar Robinson's name is known, but it's not something that people clamor over. Their star fades. Nobody's getting in lines to get, you know, interviews with Oscar Robinson unless Oscar Robinson has something new to say. Yeah, and you're, you're so right. I mean, we do overemphasize, like, oh, you're going to be the big high school star. You know, and I, I think of, um, like, the state of Texas. Florida's like this, too, where football is so big. You talk about these fl Friday night light shows and, and how big Friday nights are with the high school. I mean, that, there's some serious pressure that goes along with that and there's some serious pushing that goes along with that and guess what everybody's star fades it's always about the next man up it's always about the next guy that's going to be coming up the next big superstar that'll be coming through the pipeline and when you think of all of that you realize why are we wasting our bodies on this why are these long-term effects worth it and a lot of times they're not so and i love football i, mean, I love watching football but i mean i'm a realist also like I understand why parents nowadays are saying, I don't want my kid to play football. I get it. And you know how fast we move on from championships, Lon Beard? They're, they're, it's literally like within 30 minutes of a post-game show. It doesn't matter if it's the NBA championship, the national championship of football, the Super Bowl. 30 minutes into the post-game show, it's, all right, let's talk about next year. Who's going to win it next year? Can they repeat? Can this team you know, beat them this time? This team's doing this. What's going to happen with... With this coach. And 
we move on that fast from a championship. No, I'm with you 100% on that one, Chris America, because I think about it this past season when the Patriots won the Super Bowl, it was within 30 seconds. I was like, all yeah. right, I need to move on to the next year. I can't even think about this damn team winning the <laughs> right. Super Bowl again. I don't, I don't even give them this any credence. That yeah. was the worst Super Bowl I ever watched. I'm already moving on. I blocked it out of my memory. I'm surprised I can even remember right now that the Patriots had won the Super Bowl last year because it really doesn't mean anything to me. Right. But you see what I I'm mean, saying, right? The thing is, is... As great as Tom Brady is, if if he's 65 with really bad knees constantly going to rehab, there's going to be no fanfare there. <laughs> there's going to be nobody there cheering him on, nobody there to get his autograph, nobody no 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 media guy is going to be there to to get his interview story about, you know, to cover his bad knees. I mean, they might every once in a while in a documentary about how football affects players' lives and stuff, but it, it's not going to be the same. Like even as big as Tom Brady is, his star will eventually fade. So I, I, I'm sorry I have to pop, pull this out, but I've been waiting a year. We've been on morning okay. shows for a year. I've been waiting a year for this tweet to come out. Mike Berlon says, Scout Team Radio, Oscar Robertson's star has faded so much that I think Chris America called him Oscar Robinson oh, about probably seven did. times in 30 seconds span. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Yes. <laughs> the, the big O, Mr. Robinson. Uh, you know, but you can't use you can't <laughs> use uh, Oscar. You can't use Chris America because I get names wrong all the time. This is why I only have one kid. I have one kid because I can't screw that name up. Uh, People with three kids, they're always like, "Hey, Jack, I mean Joe, I mean ah, whoever you are." Like I couldn't do twins on Beard. I, probably like you talk about thirty seconds after a Super Bowl. It'd be thirty seconds after my children are born if I had twins that I'd get them mixed up, and they oh, would yeah. just be mixed up for the rest of their lives. Well, you know, we've got three girls, and uh, it can be challenging. I, I, I try not to get the names mixed up uh, and not to call my wife out, but when she gets mad, she goes down the list, man. She's yeah. them all, and it's never the right kid, you know, and she'll throw the dog's name in there sometimes and the cat's name and, and all that stuff. It, you, you, just, you just do it. It's, and names are tough, especially some when people you're talking like to about go, Yeah, some people like to go with a theme, and they'll, like, they'll have names that all start with K or names that all start with D, and – for me, I'm like, you're setting yourself up for, up for failure here. You're, al you're already helping yourself call out the wrong name by doing this. Yeah, but then doesn't it eventually get to, I don't care that I got it wrong. You know who I'm talking you to. You know who I'm talking to. <laughs> every time. 50% of the time, it works every time. <laughs> Oscar Robinson. All right. So uh, let's see. We got three minutes before the break. I have a topic I want to get into, but I think it takes a little bit more than three minutes. Um, I will say that Aaron Rodgers got on a radio show yesterday, and he criticized the Colts fans for booing Andrew Luck. And, Another uh, perfect example of the star just fading instantly. Oh, you're not doing what I want, so I'm going to boo you. Yes. I was cheering you last year, but now you're retiring because you don't want to put your body through pain for my entertainment, so I'm going to boo you. Yeah, he's such a millennial. It's just too hard too to rehab. Hard. Like, come on. A Aaron Rodgers is spot on here. And, I, you know, we've, we've criticized Aaron Rodgers for a lot of what he's done, like not able to chug a beer and, and different various things. So when he comes out and he says something like the Colts fans are – he's critical of the Colts fans and he's critical of how the media let this information leak while Andrew Luck was on the sideline – um, I love that. I love that he's sticking up for one of his brethren, and he's saying, like, dude, he, he, he's ready to retire. I respect it. I think I'm going uh, to enjoy, you know, I enjoyed playing with him, and I'm, I'm happy that he's doing what's best for him and his family. And why are, we, why are we giving him a hard time, and why are we leaking this information in the middle of the game? It's absolutely ridiculous. And I'm, I'm with Aaron Rodgers on that, man. And I think um, a lot of the NFL's with them on that. That that was just a bad story, and nobody needed it to happen the way it happened. And uh, you know what? I, I blame the big media outlets like the ESPNs and the Adam Schefters of the world because that's what they are. They want that hot clickbait story to happen. So good for you, Mr. Aaron Rodgers, Double A Ron, coming out with the the good sticking up for your guy Andrew Luck. Yeah, because he knows it could happen to him too. That if he were to retire, I don't. I don't know. Do you think people in Green Bay would boo Aaron Rodgers if he did what, what um, Andrew Luck just did? You know, 
Green Bay is an interesting town, man. They they're very loyal. I don't believe that they would boo Aaron Rodgers. Did but, they boo you know, Brett Favre when he came back? I don't remember. I don't think so, man. I, when he was with Minnesota, a, that, it's a tough situation. Now that's hard too because your guy retires and then he goes to your your one of your in division rivalries. Like that's a tough situation. But I I would like to say Green Bay wouldn't, but who knows? Now. In the NFL, Chris America, last season, I felt like we saw more kickers miss field goals than any other season ever. It was just unbelievable. So I've got a celebrity that has an idea of how we can fix this kicker problem in the NFL, and I'll talk about that after a quick commercial break. <laughs> hey, Kawhi, what are you laughing at, man? This isn't funny. Fantasy sports reimagined. FanDuel, that's what I'm talking about. It is more than just fantasy sports. It's the best way to watch the games, win real cash, and bring the action right to your living room. Just choose a contest, make your picks, watch, and win. And if you go to FanDuel.com slash STR today, you can get a $5 deposit bonus. Once again, that's FanDuel.com slash STR. <laughs> Come on, man. This is not a laughing matter. If you've been listening to Scout Team Radio for a long time, you know that myself, Loudbeard, has placed a bet or two in his day. That's right. I've lost the beard bet. I lost the romper bet. But one place I don't like losing is when I bet money. And I can easily do that at MyBookie. That's right. You can go to MyBookie.ag, use promo code 12OZSports, and get a 100% deposit bonus up to $1,000. Hey, guess what? That is a lot of money. Do it. When I'm working hard, I build up a thirst for sports. That's when I grab a cold 12-ounce sports radio. (sighs) 12-ounce sports radio. Quench your sports thirst. Hey everybody, it's your favorite Patriot, Chris America, and I want you to listen every single weekday, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., and on replays from 11 a.m. to noon of Scout Team Sports. Listen, George Washington did not cross over the ocean blue in 1492 to defeat the Nazis, so you can listen to the same tired national clickbait sports stories. So once again, tune in to us every single morning, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., and then we replay from 11 to noon. I will see you there, and God bless America. Welcome back, and thank you all for listening in. Uh, Once again, we're Scout Team Radio. We have been hot and live Every morning, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m., right here on 12 on Sports Radio. We've been on air for a year doing this morning show, and we absolutely love it. We want to thank you all for listening. Chris America's on the other microphone. I'm Loudbeard. We appreciate you guys listening, but we want to also mention that we simulcast on the Full Press Radio Network. And for our good friends up in Canada, we're part of the Barn Burner Podcast Network. So we're all over the place. If you cannot catch the show live, make sure you download or uh, listen to the podcast. That's right, where you go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, Google Play, wherever you go, make sure you listen to us, Scout Team Radio. Search it on any of those podcast platforms. Uh, Lastly, hit us up on Twitter. We like to get social at Scout Team Radio. We've got Mike Berlon and Memphis Spence both tweeting in this morning with some hot tweets. We appreciate you guys' support out there, especially one year in to this uh, daily morning show that we're doing. Now, uh, Twitter's a unique place because I was just looking at twi- Twitter on the uh, commercial break, and you can hit us up on at Scout Team Radio, but there's also a hashtag that's trending. It's called Cheesy Bands. And um, if we could take all the creativity of people on Twitter and, and, and really hone that in, we could probably find cures for cancer and all this stuff if we just take all that. But instead, we're putting it to towards a hashtag called Cheesy Bands where we've come up with ideas like 
Dairy J. Blige, Fleetwood Mac and Cheese, Cheezer, all kinds of great band names based off of cheese. Now, I don't know why this hashtag is uh, tre- trending right now. I don't know when cheese became so popular. But I love cheese and I love music. So the fondue fighters, they're, they're my favorite at this point. So uh, anyway, you know, I got derailed a little bit there, Chris America. I got derailed. But before the break, I did say we have a cure for the common kicker in the NFL. And soccer superstar, U.S. women's national team legend Carly Lloyd comes out and she says that she believes women soccer players could be kickers in the NFL. So, Chris America, I ask you, if you had a woman soccer player who could come out yep. and just had laser pinpoint accuracy mm-hmm. but could only kick, I'm going to say, 45 or less, would that be worth it for an NFL team to invest mm-hmm. in? I'm going to say no, because, and not because it's a woman, but I wouldn't want any kicker that can only kick 45 or less. The problem is, with kickers in the NFL, if it was my college team, I would say yes, because we, we're allowed 85 scholarship athletes on a team. So I can have as many backup kickers as you want. But it's almost like fantasy football when you look at it. You don't want more than one kicker on your team, do you? Uh, no. I mean, a lot of teams have that punter that, uh, has the big leg that does some of their, like, 55 and 60 yarders, but yeah, think about it. if I have it, that laser... guy on my team, if I have that guy on my team, then yes. But I now, still think I want the inaccurate guy that can kick it far, you know, like your, and I wouldn't say that they're inaccurate, but, um, you know, Sebastian Janikowski and, uh, my boy Gano over in, over in Carolina, like, I like having that guy where you're in that fourth quarter situation, and I like seeing that little friendly green field goal you got line to make, you know, closer to the 40-yard line than I do the 25-yard line. Let's put it that way. All right. Well, now you could invest an extra spot on your team for an additional kicker, but you're right. It's hard to, to, to do that when you have so many needs at other positions where you need depth and you need backups and and you, you're worried about injuries and if, if this guy's ready to go. So, yeah, it, it's a challenging situation, but I want to put yourself in somebody else's shoes. Think okay. of uh, if you're a Chicago Bears fan. Now, you have a good friend. His name's Sean. He's a Chicago Bears fan. Uh, pretend you're him for just a moment. And this past season, you had one of the best seasons you've had in a very long time. And what was the one thing that prevented you from moving on in the playoffs? A quarterback who could get you touchdowns. Nope. Yeah. A kicker. Mm mm. It was that a dude kicker. was four for five, wasn't he? I don't care. That's eighty yeah. percent. Is that good enough <laughs> to be an NFL kicker? I mean I'm doing I'm odds here. Eighty percent. What was what was their number two overall draft pick quarterback's completion percentage? I bet it wasn't eighty percent. And the Bears didn't league. lose that game because they missed field goals. The Bears lost that game because they had to kick field goals instead of scoring touchdowns when they got in position to score touchdowns. I yeah. believe they the kicker was four for five. If your kicker is kicking five field goals in a game, you deserve to lose. Plain and simple. Uh, did he de- deserve to lose his job then? No, I, I thought that that whole thing of making him lose his job was shenanigans. Like, he wasn't the reason you lost. So you go out there, he makes four for five, and yes, it's 80%. But he goes out and he makes one mistake, and you're going to blame him when if I watch the whole entire game, I can find... A ton of mistakes that Mitchell Trubisky made. A ton of missed opportunities, missed throws left and right. And But that's the life of a kicker, though, isn't it? You you miss one field goal and we're ready to get rid of you. If you overthrow one pass, that would have been a touchdown. And eh, we move on with life. You're the quarterback. Who cares? It happens. Um, the only thing I heard in that was... I swear to God, I'll pistol whip <laughs> the next guy that says shenanigans. That's shenanigans. the only thing I heard in that whole, whole, yep. whole thing. Yeah, that's all I heard is shenanigans. You started with shenanigans and my mind went... Racing because I love shenanigans. Um, back to your back to your question though, because you sit there and you say forty five and less, and if this was like twenty years ago, I would I would be all over it, but now I feel like a fifty yard field goal is easily makeable now. When you see a fifty yard field goal today, it's not like when we were growing up, you know, back in the nineties where, oh my gosh, it's a fifty yard field goal. I hope my guy can make it. Now we look at fifty yards like, all right, it's not a chip shot, but. This is a very makeable field goal. Now, what if I, what if I dial it back? So, what if I say forty-eight? 
I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna go a little further. Forty eight. I could I could split different. that hair. All right, so we're going forty eight yards. But we're 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 talking ninety eight percent accuracy, forty forty eight and, and in. Whereas most of your other kickers are gonna be ninety percent accurate. So you're you're yeah. talking about a, a much greater accuracy forty eight and in. But after forty eight it falls off a cliff. Now and and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's women kickers that can kick at 60 yards. I, I don't know, and I don't want to be sexist with this, but I'm not sure that there are. I mean, it's hard sure to say. sure somewhere in the world there is. Yeah, but it, let's say if, if we have, you know, the top tier of women kickers, you know, we're probably looking at a few few less yards than the, the top tier of the men kickers, right? Is that just, is, am yeah. I being re- uh, sexist by saying that, or am I being realist? No, you're being realist. Okay. So we're going to say a little bit less, but you have a kicker that can kick 60 to 63 yards in a man, but his accuracy less than 45 is 8 to 10% less than what the women's is. Is it worth rostering them? And and I'm just going to make the argument, I think it is. I mean, if you can get that much more accuracy, not to say that the women are more accurate, but if you had a woman, a specific kicker that was that accurate but could only cook, kick up to 45 or up to 48 I think it would be worth a spot because there are so many games that come down to two points, three points, and you're sitting there thinking, wow, if the kicker just would have made that kick, they would have been all good. That would have been the difference in the game. And that's what football has come, in, come down to is I think you need to have that accuracy with a kicker. And if you don't have a good kicker, it puts you in a tough spot. You know, now that I think of it, I think I'm going to change my answer to, yeah, you go with it because now you're saying 8 to 10% more accurate I, I talked about that whole end of game scenario i'm going to find myself more inside the those 45 to 25 yard field goals than i am going to be in those end of game scenarios and now i'm sitting there thinking back to miami versus florida and again it's all about when the kick happened now we will sit there and say like oh if they made that kick you know florida could have lost that game if that kick happened at the end of the game then people would be ragging on that Miami kicker. But because it happened in the middle of the game or in the middle of the third quarter, whenever it was, it's like, okay, that happens. And to me, every kick matters, whether it's the first one or the last one. Everything that happens on the field matters towards something. And I would want my kicker to make that field goal that Miami missed. So I'd rather have that woman who's accurate than whoever that Miami kicker is who maybe he can kick at 55 yards. Yeah, and that's just our opening game of football, right? Like, that's one yeah. game, and we already see that the kicker matters because if he would have made that kick, they would have been within one point, and they could have kicked another one. Now, you, right. again, scenario-based, you need to be able to make both of those kicks, but you're, you're looking at a situation where games can be won or lost but from the kicker, and just like the Ch- Chicago Bears kicker, yes, he made four out of five, and yes, he, he was pretty accurate, but when you miss one, you all of a sudden get that criticism. So if you could just get a little bit more accuracy, and again, within 45, I'm saying 90% on a regular kicker, 98% on, on a female kicker, would you would you take that chance? Absolutely. To me, every yeah. day, all day. So maybe Carly Lloyd has something percentage here. percentage is ridiculous. And, and I'm, you know, Now you're making stuff up, but here. I get what you're saying. I'm, I'm picking up what you're putting down. Um, what, what if it was 95% for the woman and 90% for the man? You, you'd still say, you know what, that 5%, that could be the difference. I'm taking yeah. that chance. Loud Beard, exciting news. All right, I'm excited. I just found that on Twitter. Okay, I, I'm, I'm putting on my excited voice. Please go ahead, Chris America, with your excitement. Uh, we have another edition of one of our childhood's favorite games, Mario Kart. is coming out with its latest edition. It's called Mario Kart Tour. And... You know what's crazy about Mario Kart is the game really, other than just like the graphics, really hasn't changed that much, but yet you're always excited to play Mario Kart. There's never a time where I've said, somebody said, do you want to play Mario Kart? And I was like, eh, no, I'm I'm not in the mood. It is one of those games that, especially when you're in a group, like two people, three people, whatever, you can always play and have fun. Mario Kart is a timeless game, one of the very few that has endured over the years where you can say, you know what, I could go back and play the original, and it's probably a little choppy with the graphics, or I play the one now. It's exactly the same, but it is fun no matter what. So yeah, Mario Kart, man, that's good stuff. Do you think it surpassed the regular Mario Brothers game in and of itself? I I, I would have to say it has, because they don't make the Mario game anymore, do they? 
I have no like idea. Just a generic Mario and Luigi, like let's go stop Bowser type game. I don't think they have. That, no, I mean they they put them in different scenarios, right? Like you got Mario Kart, you got Super Smash Brothers. Those are the scenarios where you still see Mario a lot. Um, as far as a Mario game, I don't know. I'd, do you own a Switch? I don't own a Switch. I, I'm sure they no, have I a don't. Mario game for that. I would guess. But I think Maybe. all the Mario games now are like Mario Party, Super Smash Mario Brothers. Like you said, like this Mario Kart. It's not like a typical, hey, I'm going to go through a world and solve these puzzles and collect coins and jump over Goombas and save the princess from the castle type game. Hey, 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 who are you calling a Goomba? You're a Goomba. Uh, you know, they re need to remake that Super Mario Brothers movie. That wasn't half bad. No, it was, it was Academy Award winning, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Um, here's some news for you. Uh, David Ortiz, he uh, gets a private investigator to get onto the case. He doesn't seem to be very happy with the conclusion that it was a mistaken identity is why he was shot. He feels like there might be more to it. So he takes the former police commissioner of Boston, the ex-police commissioner, and hires him as a private investigator to continue to stay on the case. Because he feels like there is continued to be foul play. This is straight out of uh, law and order right now, man. This is getting good. Bro, why does this feel like a Mark Wahlberg, David Ortiz comedy? <laughs> like Mark Wahlberg is the, the ex-cop who got kicked off the force for being too good of a cop. And now I need your help. And when David Ortiz comes calling, you answer it. It's it either does. that or like... That, what was it called? The other guy's um, Will Ferrell's character. Like, David Ortiz comes calling, and even though you want to follow by the rules, you have to answer the call. <laughs> uh, you I you just know see what? Them, That's a like, great example. I see them just like, you know, that comedy where they start off in Boston and then they end up in the islands, and there's all of these different funny action scenes and stuff. You, we've seen that movie before, right? Yeah. Yeah, that maybe this is going to be a movie. I think you've got a great idea. You're you're a heck of a screenwriter, Chris America. I want you to go ahead and write this up, and uh, yeah. we'll see what we can we can get out of it. Maybe Hollywood will call come. come we we got to get Mark Wahlberg on it too, right? If you're going to go with the Boston oh, yeah. cop, it's got to be Mark Wahlberg. Uh, maybe Ben Affleck. No, no, you're right, Mark Wahlberg. No, Mark Can't Wahlberg. Be. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, so last night, I knew I knew you were preoccupied, Chris America. Last night, the uh, MTV VMAs were on, so uh, I'm oh, sure yeah. you enjoyed that. That's I saw it was like Billie Eilish versus somebody. Your girl Billie Eilish was was up for awards, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Billie Eilish shoes. I think she was going for new artist, um, and she was going against. Oh, I can't. Why is it escaping me? I should know this. Um, so a couple little little factoids about the VMAs, and I get my facts from Twitter. So I learn about things that are on TV through social media. I don't actually watch things anymore. But little Nas goes up there, and he receives an award, and he pulls out the old, like, you know, are you naughty or nice scroll when he's going to thank his whoever's, you know. And uh, that's now becoming meme-worthy because little Nas, man, he's the man. I know you don't like his song, but he's kind of funny. He's a funny dude. Oh, I'm sure he is. He seems like a fun guy, and it's I get why the song is popular. I just hate it. I get I just, it. I get it. It got overplayed. Um, other top news from the VMAs that came out, Miley Cyrus uh, comes out with her new song, and she does a little touching performance. Um, it was a pretty good song. I, I, I listened to it. It's called Slide Away. And, you know, she t I think it's kind of emotional because she talks about her maturation, you know, her changes from, you know, I'm not an 18-year-old girl anymore, and, and I, I I'd like to change my life. And it, I think it was touching because you could see the emotion in it. So Miley Cyrus out with a new song, and you will probably get sick of this song because I have a feeling it'll be all over the radio and everywhere the next uh, upcoming months. I'm pretty sure radio is going to jump all over this one. And lastly, Missy Elliott comes in, and she does a compilation where she plays all of her pop songs from over the years, all of her popular songs, and uh, she absolutely kills it. Missy Elliott, it's like she never aged. No. Missy Elliott never ages, and um, I feel like all celebrities now just don't age. Yeah, is it the the makeup and the the how the camera portrays them, or is it all the money to be able to get like daily rejuvenating facials and and plastic surgery, just the right ways where it doesn't look plasticky and and things like that? I I don't know. 
it's a weird world I, we I live think, in. I think plastic surgery has just come a long way since the 90s and 80s. Though some people still do it bad. Like, I saw Courtney Cox on a show the other day, and I was like, oh, my God. She looks like she turned into, like, Barbie plastic. You know, it was terrible. Where others, where you say, wow, they look really good still, then you're thinking, oh, yeah, they probably had just a nice little touch of it. You know, um, Loudbeard, a story we missed again last week, not only the Larry Bird story, but we forgot to announce the Dancing with the Stars lineup. And it was funny because you had given the Lamar Odom story about how he was no longer watching adult videos to help, you know, become a more healthy guy. Yep. Well, he's going to be also learning how to dance and he's going to be on Dancing with the Stars. Is this going to be good for him to kind of clean up his image? Is Dancing with the Stars what it is now that helps you with that turnaround? Yeah, I think it is. Well, number one, it puts you out in the spotlight, right? Like people yep. get to know you. They do these, um, you know, little videos where they they show you practicing with your your uh, professional dancer, and and they make it. They give you personality and they make it entertaining. So in that manner, he's going to become likable. And I think people who liked watching the Kardashians got to know him a little bit, and this is just going to get people to know him a little bit more. You don't see the CD side when you watch it on network television. You don't see the challenges that he's had with addiction, the challenges he's had with, with uh, sexual encounters that may have not been the brightest idea for him to do. And he is going to go out there and just be a likable guy. And that in itself is going to create a better image for Lamar Odom because he needs that. Because right now, yeah, he's had some problems. And I was just talking about this. Is Mike Tyson the best example of how to turn your image around? Like, has anybody turned their image around better than Mike Tyson? No. I think Mike Tyson just did it perfectly. Um, and he's very likable now. Everybody, yeah. you know, it's like, oh, he's just a cuddly, likable guy. But we forget about, you know, he went to jail and it was not um, for, beating for good reasons. For beating his wife? Yes. Yes. Um, it was, he bit a man's uh, ear off. In the middle of a boxing match. Yes. Yes. We can forget those things, though. Well, speaking of other guys that have kind of had some legal troubles in the past, uh, Ray Lewis is also going to be on Dancing with the Stars, Loudbeard. But that's not the most exciting one for you, Loudbeard. You ready okay. for this? I have three stars that I'm going to mention that is going to make you watch season 27 of Dancing with the Stars on November 20, on November 12th. I'm ready. Oh, wait, are those are the semifinals. I'm sorry. I don't know when the show starts, but here we go. You ready? I'm ready. Hannah Brown, Alabama Hannah, is going to be on Dancing with the Stars. I've heard that. I've heard that. Alabama Hannah, she's one of my favorites. I like it. She's got a little, little twang. You know, people ready from for Alabama the second, got a twang. The second person that's going to make you want to watch? Yes. James Vanderbeek. Woo! Dawson oh, himself. Team heartthrob. Teen Dawson heartthrob. Creek is going to be on there. Um, is do you think he's what was the other what was the football show he was known as for? Was it Blue Mountain State or Blue Chips or what was that movie that he was in after Dawson's Creek or that show? Varsity Blues. You Varsity had the right Blues. color. Yeah. So, what do you think he's more known for, Dawson's Creek or Varsity Blues? Um, Varsity Blues, Dawson's Creek. I'm going to say Dawson's Creek, but Varsity Blues was a pretty pretty solid movie. Because you know how um, Rudy was in Stranger Things Season 2? Yes. Well, somebody referenced, I don't remember the, his actor. What is the actor's name? Do you know the actor's name? Samwise Gamgee. Yeah, so they made reference. They said Sean the actor's Astin. name. Sean Astin. They're like, Sean Astin from Stranger Things. And then somebody else was like, uh, you mean Sean Astin from Lord of the Rings? And I'm sitting here like, uh, you mean Sean Astin from Goonies and Rudy? <laughs> yeah, he's all over the place. That's a closet good actor right there. But yeah. you're right, James James Vanderbeek. I'm I'm gonna say he's really known for Dawson's Creek, but uh, Varsity Blues is a quality movie. He should be known for that. And on a side note, Captain America was in Varsity Blues. Uh, do you remember the whipped cream scene that was? I never seen was, Varsity Blues. Mm, you should see, check that out. That's a good movie. I, I avoided it because James Vanderbeek was in it. I know bad uh, reason. I feel like there's one more. One more star that you want to tell me about. There's one more star, and this is what would do it for me to make me want to watch. And that, of course, is Kel Mitchell. <sighs> they nailed it. 
They absolutely yeah. nailed it. Um, Mike Berlant tweets in, I don't want your dance in life. James Vanderbeek, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Oh. Uh, yes, Kel from Keenan and Kel. For those who don't know who Kel Mitchell is, and you only associate him with Keenan, um, I just hope that he dresses up as the Good Burger guy at one point. Like, you know how they made, um, I can't even remember the actor's name, but you know how they made Carlton do the Carlton dance? I think they need Kel to do, or maybe the orange soda thing. Like, I love me some orange soda. I do, I do, I do. Ew. And what I was, was that? behind on that. I was like, yeah, where's it at? Oh, my God, I'm on the wrong. Uh, what, I thought what, you were letting me hang. I thought you were like, oh, let me embarrass Chris by a little bit. I did. A little bit of both. Is that the end of the show? Is it 655 already? It went by like a blink of an eye. Uh, and I had a really good. Tomorrow. I had another really good topic. It'll have to wait for tomorrow. No teases. Uh, we got a whole nother year of great shows to do. That's right. Peace. Shenanigans. <laughs>